Chloe Lemieux was a guy known for biting other players and Sean Avery talks shit to absolutely anybody. Ulf Samuelson ended careers and Brad Marchand is so bad that Barack Obama called him a little ball of hate. These are the most hated players from all NHL teams. Up first is a guy known as Dino Cicerelli from the Florida Panthers. He was a right winger renowned for both being a skilled player and a loose cannon agitator during his time in the league. And while he didn't spend all that much time with the Panthers, Cicerelli's career was primarily associated with the Minnesota North Stars and the Detroit Red Wings. He was the kind of player who'd rather settle disputes with his stick than his fists, but still amassed a whopping 1,200 penalty minutes throughout his career. In one of his most infamous incidents in 1988 as a North Star, he viciously attacked Toronto's rookie defenseman Luke Richardson with a stick, resulting in fines, jail time, and suspensions from the NHL. Up next is the rat you all know and love, or hate like I do. We're talking about Brad Marchand from the Boston Bruins. It's an undeniable truth, facing Brad Marchand on the ice for two consecutive seasons is no picnic. Marchand clinched the title of the NHL's most disliked player to play against, as voted by the league. However, paradoxically, every team coverts him. Among the 626 NHL players surveyed, 36.5% cast their vote for Marchand, and this is a notable increase from the 26.4% he received in 2022. And this is when 566 players were polled by the NHLPA. Marchand stands out as one of the most impactful pests in NHL history. He's consistently topping the charts as both the best and the worst trash talker in the game from 2018 to 2020. Marchand embodies a diverse figure in the league, with eight suspensions under his belt and recently having a hefty fine for a dangerous trip on an opponent, Marchand's notoriety only grows. What adds fuel to his fire is his top tier scoring ability. And this is despite all of his cheap shots, punching opponents, and even the bizarre attacks of licking faces. Notably, former President Barack Obama once coined him the little ball of hate. Up next is Matthew Barnaby of the Buffalo Sabres. Matthew Barnaby was a formidable presence during his tenure in the NHL. Known for his willingness to engage in fights and his aggressive style of play, over his 14-year career, he participated in an impressive 191 fights, earning him a spot in the top 20 on the list of the most penalized players in NHL history. Barnaby's reputation was a loose cannon, and it was solidified during a notorious incident on March 29, 1996. This is when the Buffalo Sabres faced off against the Flyers. Following a takedown, a massive line brawl erupted. But to the surprise of many, Burnaby did not engage in fighting. Instead, he lay in front of the net, appearing injured. However, as a Flyers player skated over, Barnaby unexpectedly tickled him with his goalie stick, sparkling further chaos. This incident exemplified Barnaby's role as an agitator capable of getting under the skin of anyone he played against. Up next is Evander Kane when he played on the Winnipeg Jets. Evander Kane's tenure with Winnipeg was marked by conflicts both on and off the ice, leading to his eventual departure from the team. Kane reportedly clashed with several teammates during his four seasons, and there were tensions spilling over into public incidents. Former NHL forward Nick Antropov recalled an incident where Dustin Bufflin threw Kane's clothes into the team's shower after Kane allegedly wore a tracksuit to a pregame meeting in violation of the team's dress code. Kane's refusal to adhere to the team norms and his alleged lack of accountability ultimately led to his trade request, which he made twice during his time with the Jets. Eventually, Kane was traded to the Buffalo Sabres, but the drama continued to follow him throughout his career. Now, it's time for a legend. We're talking about Theo Fleury of the Calgary Flames. Despite being an undersized player with a stature of 5 feet 6 inches, he made a significant impact in the NHL with his fearless and physical style of play. However, off the ice, Fleury battled addiction issues and openly admitted to struggles with alcohol and drugs. 
In his book, Playing With Fire, Fleury made claims about the NHL's leniency toward him despite failing drug tests, attributing it to his status as a top scorer in the league. A notable incident occurred during a game against the San Jose Sharks on December 28th, where Fleury's addiction influenced his behavior on the ice, resulting in a major penalty and a game misconduct. Off the ice, Fleury reportedly engaged in a confrontation with the Sharks' mascot, leading to the mascot's rib being broken. Despite Fleury's trash talking about the NHL, his actions have contributed to his reputation as one of the most disliked players in NHL history. If you're enjoying today's video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe, 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 subscribe! Now back to the video. Bob Probert of the Detroit Red Wings is regarded by many as the greatest enforcer of all time. Bob Probert sits fourth in all-time penalty minutes with 3,300. Known for his fierce loyalty and protection of teammates, Probert served as an enforcer for both the Detroit Red Wings and the Chicago Blackhawks during the mid-1980s to the early 2000s. Beyond his fighting prowess, Probert showcased his scoring ability, tallying 62 points in the 1987-88 season, earning him a trip to the All-Star game despite accumulating 398 penalty minutes. Probert was a force to be reckoned with, often going head to head with some of the toughest, roughest hockey players you'd ever know, including Ty Domi, Wendell Clark, Marnie McSorley, Stu Grimson, and Tony Twist. Now I know Marty McSorley is a definite candidate, but for the Edmonton Oilers, we got Ken Linesman. Nicknamed The Rat, Ken Linesman earned his moniker for good reason. Despite his pure skill, Linesman's reputation stems from his pest-like behavior on the ice. Playing for teams like Boston, Philadelphia, Edmonton, and briefly the Maple Leafs, Linesman rarely engaged in fights, but managed to accumulate 1,727 penalty minutes throughout his career, and this was mainly because of his agitating style of play. Linesman's on-ice antics, including incidents of assault, kicking opponents, and accusations of biting, earned him a reputation as one of the NHL's nastiest players. Despite the controversy, Linesman lived up to his nickname, leaving a legacy as a notorious pest in NHL history. Now this would not be a list of the most hated if Tiger Williams did not play on the Maple Leafs. Williams holds the distinction of being one of the all-time leaders in NHL penalty minutes, accumulating a staggering 3,966 minutes over 962 career games, averaging 4.12 minutes per outing. While Williams earned many of these minutes for fighting, he was known for engaging in altercations with opponents who were not typically fighters. Williams approached conflicts with a willingness to resort to physicality regardless of his opponent's reputation or style of play. This aggressive and confrontational approach made him the most hated player in the history of the most hated team. Now we're talking about Todd Bertuzzi of the Vancouver Canucks. He is wildly regarded as the most hated player ever to play on the Canucks because of his involvement in one of the most vicious attacks in NHL history. In 2004, Bertuzzi assaulted forward Steve Moore of the Avs in what appeared to be a premeditated ambush. This brutal incident effectively ended Moore's career and resulted in legal repercussions for Bertuzzi. He was charged with assault for attack and suspended for 13 regular season games and 7 playoff games. Additionally, he was suspended from international play for 17 months. Bertuzzi had a prior suspension in the 2001-2002 season for leaving the bench to join a fight, but the severity of Steve Moore incident significantly outweighed this previous infraction. Tomo Rudu of the Carolina Hurricanes is undeniably talented, possessing skills that made him a desirable asset for many teams. However, his talent does not translate to popularity among fans or opponents alike due to his reputation as a pest on the ice. Rudu was notorious for engaging in unsportsmanlike conduct from targeting players like Nicholas Backstrom to causing injuries such as the incident involving Dennis Wyden. His aggressive playing style, characterized by elbows, spearing, slashing, and other actions aimed at gaining a competitive edge often made him a source of frustration for opposing teams. Additionally, Rutu was known for delivering thunderous open ice hits, hits that occasionally pushed the boundaries of the rule book. As a result of his continuous behavior, Rutu earned the distinction of being the most hated player in Carolina. Known as the Carbon. 
Daniel Carcelo earned a reputation as a scrappy and agitating player throughout his career. Drafted 73rd overall, Carcelo quickly made his mark as someone opponents wanted to avoid. His on-ice antics often led to his suspensions, including altercations with officials. Despite his controversial style, Carcelo won two Stanley Cups with the Hawks in 2013 and 2015. Since retiring, he has shifted his focus to advocacy, founding the Chapter 5 Foundation to assist players dealing with post-concussion syndrome. Next is a guy you've all been waiting for. Claude Lemieux of the Colorado Avalanche. Claude was a skilled player with a tendency to cross the line during games. While competing with the Canadians, he gains notoriety for his fierce competitiveness and antagonistic behavior. His feud with the Detroit Red Wings, particularly, highlighted by a notorious hit on Chris Draper during the 1995-96 playoffs, cemented his reputation as a controversial figure. Another controversial incident involved biting the finger of Calgary Flames' Jim Peplinski during a playoff game. For Columbus, we got Jeff Carter. Carter became a figure of disdain for Columbus Blue Jackets fans after being traded to the team from the Philadelphia Flyers. Despite signing a long-term deal with the Flyers, Carter was unexpectedly traded to Columbus in 2011. Unhappy with the move, Carter initially refused to report to the Blue Jackets until being persuaded by a teammate, Rick Nash. His tenure in Columbus was marked by friction, leading to another trade, this time to the LA Kings. The trade brought Jack Johnson and a conditional first round pick to Columbus. Despite his leadership qualities, he earned a reputation as one of the NHL's dirtiest players. But who is he? His name is Steve Ott of the Dallas Stars. In a 2009 Sports Illustrated poll, he tied for first place as the league's dirtiest opponent. Ott's aggressive style led to multiple suspensions for the incidents like eye gouging and illegal hits to the head. Despite his controversial play, Ott remained a scoring threat, tallying 22 goals through the 2009-2010 season. During the 1996-97 season, Dave Manson made his mark with the Arizona Coyotes, playing 66 games and accumulating 164 penalty minutes. His reputation preceded him, having previously played for Chicago, Edmonton, and Winnipeg. Known as someone not to be trifled with, Manson's intimidating presence on the ice was undeniable. His illustrious career saw him amass a staggering 2,792 penalty minutes, keeping opponents on high alert whenever he stepped onto the rink. Manson's notoriety was such that he earned the nickname Charlie as a reference to the infamous Charles Manson. His aggressive style of play often resulted in penalties with a standout season of seeing him accumulate 352 penalty minutes while playing for Chicago. Throughout his career, Manson faced three suspensions including two incidents of pushing a referee and one for biting Scott Stevens' hand. His penchant for the physical play and a penchant for controversy made him a figure to be reckoned with in the NHL. Steve Downey A forward for the Tampa Bay Lightning entered the NHL with a reputation for being a dirty player, which he had cultivated during his junior hockey days. This reputation persisted into a professional career as evidenced by his suspension for 20 games before even playing his first regular season NHL game. The suspension stemmed from an illegal hit to the head of Ottawa Senators Dean McAmmond during the 2007 preseason. Downey's disciplinary issues extended beyond that incident and he was fined for jumping over the bench during a fight and suspended for another 20 games. While playing in the AHL, he slashed a linesman and Downey's track record as a dirty player has earned him widespread disdain although he has sometimes escaped punishment for his actions. Montreal's most hated player is P.K. Subban. In 2013, P.K. Subban not only received the Norris Trophy, but also earned the dubious honor of being the NHL's most hated player according to Sports Illustrated. While he was adored by Montreal fans for his physical play and offensive skills, Subban's on-ice demeanor drew disdain from opposing players. His celebratory antics, trash-talking, and propensity for diving soured his reputation. Despite his contributions on the ice, Subban's larger-than-life personality clashed with some teammates, notably Brendan Gallagher leading to on-ice altercations. Subban's polarizing presence cemented his status as the most hated player in Montreal history. For the Nashville Predators, we got none other than Jordan Tutu. 
He was nicknamed a predator for good reason, as he aggressively targeted opponents for high speed airborne hits, which often let them dazed or concussed. In 2007, Tudor received a five game suspension for knocking out Dallas defenseman Stefan Robinas with a punch to the head. Despite another dangerous hit on Coyotes' Daniel Winnick the same year, he faced no discipline. Tudor's aggressive play culminated in a two game ban in 2011 for charging Sabres goalie Ryan Miller. Before moving on with the video, leave a like and subscribe to catch our latest content and help our channel grow. Scott Stevens of the New Jersey Devils was a Hall of Fame player who earned a renowned title as not just a cheap shot artist, but as one of the game's greatest checkers. Unyielding and relentless, Stevens dominated opponents, even delivering bone crushing hits to players without possession of the puck. Although some may argue Stevens wasn't dirty, his intimidating style and devastating hits made him one of the most feared and hated players to face. Throughout his illustrious career, he played over 1,600 games and secured three Stanley Cups with the New Jersey Devils. Darius Kasparatis was renowned as one of the NHL's premier pests during his tenure. A rugged defenseman, he brought 100% effort to every play, making his presence felt. Kasparatis didn't shy away from pushing the boundaries of legality, often crossing the line with brutal hits that left opponents reeling. Despite his polarizing style, he remained unwavering in his approach, earning both respect and disdain from the players and fans alike. Sean Avery of the New York Rangers was notorious for his ability to agitate opponents and even his own teammates. His unsavory antics extended beyond the ice with a history of controversial comments and behavior. Avery's repertoire included trash talking, diving, spearing, sucker punches, and questionable tactics that made rules in the NHL. Despite all the suspensions and fines he had, Avery led the league in penalty minutes multiple times and was a lightning rod for controversy throughout his career. Chris Neal carved out a lengthy career as one of the NHL's toughest enforcers, known for his physicality and willingness to sacrifice his body for the team. While he could contribute offensively, Neal's true impact came from his hard-hitting style and knack for agitating opponents. Whether delivering bone-jarring hits or engaging in physical altercation, Neal epitomized the role of an enforcer. However, his aggressive play occasionally bordered on recklessness, drawing criticism for his penchant for injuring opponents. Former Philadelphia Flyers defenseman Chris Pronger stands out among a roster of notorious players in Flyers history. Pronger's career was marred by numerous suspensions, totaling nine infractions by the NHL for various dirty plays. One of the most egregious incidents occurred when he stomped on the ankle of Vancouver's Ryan Kessler with a skate. Pronger developed a reputation for cheap shots regardless of which team he played for, leaving a lasting mark as one of the league's most controversial figures. Al Samuelson of the Pittsburgh Penguins gave infamy throughout the league for his aggressive playing style, often targeting opponents' knees with low hits. One of his most infamous incidents involved Cam Neely, then a forward for the Vancouver Canucks, and then later the Boston Bruins. Samuelson's relentless harassment of Neely led to a retaliatory sucker punch that knocked him unconscious, resulting in Neely gladly serving a suspension for the incident. With 2,453 penalty minutes and several suspensions for stick relief, and offenses, Samuelson left a polarizing legacy defined by his abrasive on-ice tactics. Brian Marshman, a hard-hitting defenseman who played for several teams, including the San Jose Sharks, earned a reputation for his aggressive style of play. However, Marshman's hits often targeted opponents' knees, leading to injuries for several top players. Notably, he injured Mike Gartner, causing a partial collapse of Gartner's lung. Marshman faced disciplinary action throughout his 12-year NHL career, accumulating a total of 13 suspensions for offenses such as elbowing and spearing, cementing his status as a repeat offense. Yanni Gord of the Seattle Kraken is the new guy that we all hate. Even though he's just 5'9 and 175 pounds, Gord is renowned as one of the NHL's fiercest and most agitating players. He embodies leadership and tenacity, often engaging in physical confrontations with opponents, regardless of their size. Gord's ability to draw penalties from opponents while effectively stirring the pot on the ice makes him a valuable asset as a Kraken's primary agitator. Marty McSorley of the LA Kings had a standout season in 1992. 
scoring a career-high 15 goals and contributing 26 assists for a total of 41 points. Despite facing stiff competition from other blue liners in an era where several defensemen surpassed 80 points, McSorley's offensive prowess was notable, with just 15 goals tying for 13 points among defensemen. However, McSorley was not just an offensive threat, he played with an edge, accumulating a staggering 399 penalty minutes during that one season, ranking him 5th all-time for a single season. His gritty play and heavy hitting were instrumental in the Kings' playoff success, particularly in their victory over the Maple Leafs in the conference final. McSorley's influence extended beyond his on-ice performance as he received the Selkie Trophy vote and led the league in plus-minus in the 1991 season. The Minnesota Wild, known for the composed demeanor, had Matt Cook as their most notorious player. However, Cook's reputation for dirty plays primarily stemmed from his own time with other teams. Renowned for his cheap shots to the head, Cook infamously cut Ottawa defenseman Eric Carl's Achilles tendon with his skate play. His career was marked by multiple suspensions for illegal hits, including one that ended the career of Boston Bruins' Mark Savard with an unnecessary shot to the head for which Cook faced no suspension. Maxim Lepierre Despite having a relatively light suspension record, is widely regarded as one of the most hated players in hockey. Lapierre's reputation stems from his propensity for trash-talking, irritating opponents, and engaging in unsportsmanlike behavior. He gains notoriety for his habit of instigating altercations with late hits and dives, only to retreat from fights by turtling when challenged. Lapierre's role as an agitator and his willingness to do whatever it took to provoke opponents led to widespread disdain for teams across the league. During his tenure with the Anaheim Ducks, Corey Perry consistently ranked among the top NHL goal scorers. However, his aggressive style of play often bordered on crossing the line, leading to numerous instances of controversial action. One notable incident occurred when Perry delivered a vicious slash to Edward Vasek's face while the defenseman was down in the corner. Additionally, there were instances of Corey Perry cross-checking Geno A. Barkov in the hamstring area and spearing stars forward Jamie Benn during the playoffs, following a hard hit in the game. These actions underscore Perry's volatile temper and a penchant for questionable behavior throughout his career. Consequently, Perry finds himself without a team after being released by the Chicago Blackhawks for many years. Ryan Reeves was known as a top fourth liner in the NHL, accumulating penalty minutes and delivering hard hits without regularly crossing the line. However, after joining the Las Vegas Golden Knights in the 2018 trade deadline, Reeves' reputation began to shift. He started to make headlines for negative reasons, with instances of late hits, hits to the head, and outright dirty plays resulting in serious injuries to opposing players. In the 2021 playoffs, Reeves laid out a dangerous hit on former Minnesota Wilds defenseman Ryan Suter, leaving him injured on the ice. He followed this up with a retaliatory hit on Colorado Avalanche defenseman Ryan Graves, resulting in a physical altercation that saw Reeves pull a chunk of Graves' hair. While tough play and sticking up for teammates are valued in hockey, Reeves' actions have crossed the line into intent to injure, earning him a negative reputation during his time with the Knights. Chris Simon was known for his aggressive and often dirty play on the ice, leading to numerous suspensions throughout his NHL career. He was suspended eight times by the NHL, including a 30-game ban from 2007 for stomping on fellow agitator Jarko Rutu, which was the longest suspension in NHL history, at least at the time. Simon also received a 25-game suspension for slashing Ryan Holloway in the head. His disciplinary issues extend beyond just stick infractions, as he was also suspended for kneeing and issuing racial slurs. In total, Chris Simon served 65 games of suspension. For more NHL content, click the video on the screen to watch the most embarrassing moments in NHL history. But before you go, let us know which player past or present you believe is the most universally despised player across all 32 NHL teams, and what specific actions or behaviors do you think contributed to the notoriety? Share your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and... See ya next time.